A star, our sun, is born. Left to orbit the newborn sun is a fog of debris. The fragments careen into one another and clump together into celestial dust balls. Over millions of years, these monster clumps grow larger as they orbit the sun, until they form an array of planets, including our Earth. But some dust balls, future comets, do not merge and condense into planets. A billion or more slowly gravitate to an orbit between Neptune and Pluto, a region called the Kuiper Belt. Trillions of others are exiled partway to the next star, to a nebulous realm called the Oort Cloud, hurled outward by the gravitational fields of large planets like Jupiter. They have elliptical orbits that vary greatly. You've got the Kuiper Belt region of comets, and they're mostly compressed into a plate-like distribution. But in the Oort cloud, which is a thousand times further out, they're in a, a veritable cloud. It's, so you've got objects in this kind of an orbit, this kind of an orbit, that kind of an orbit. They're coming in from the outermost edge of the solar system. Amazingly, Astronomers did not confirm the Kuiper Belt's existence until 1992, even though it is part of our solar system. Today, they believe the Kuiper Belt is the outer range of comets with the most stable orbits, those that enter the inner solar system every three to 200 years. The best known of these, Halley, returns every 76. But it is the second region, the Oort cloud, two light years away, that troubles scientists most. Scientists believe an occasional disruption, like a change in a star's gravitational field, will eject a comet from this cloud. It can then fall under the gravitational pull of our own sun and start a journey towards our inner solar system, taking thousands of years. Scientists have no way to predict when these comets will appear and they can come from any direction. One may already be on a collision course with Earth. For these fragile outcasts, every journey into the inner solar system is fraught with peril. Some will lose their icy payload and become dormant as the sun burns off their gases. Some will break apart as their icy glue melts in the solar heat. The fragments may continue to circle the sun, appearing to us as meteor showers or shooting stars. Some comets will enter Jupiter's orbit, drawn by its enormous gravitational field. The giant planet then catapults the invaders back out of the solar system but some will run full tilt into another heavenly body. In 1997, the world awoke to a comet secretly entering our solar system. Two amateur astronomers spotted an unknown intruder near Jupiter more brilliant than any they had seen before. Dubbed Hale Bop after its discoverers, it was a visitor from the Oort cloud on its first journey around the sun in almost 5,000 years. The comets we most often see are little more than asteroids. Their gas and loose dust burned off in their frequent jogs around the sun. But comets like hale Bob, just out of the Oort cloud's deep freeze, have plenty of ice and dust to shed. They've got water ice, they've got uh, carbon dioxide ice, uh, dry ice, uh, they've got carbon monoxide ice, and all of these ices are much more volatile than water. 
So when they get in the inner solar system, they go nuts. Fortunately, we could marvel without fear at Hale Bob's glorious moment in the sun. It sailed by unobstructed, 200 million kilometers from Earth, just a bit further away than our sun. But what if it had been on a collision course with our planet? In 1992, the United States government launched an aggressive program to analyze the threat comets and asteroids pose to Earth. It's called the Space Guard Survey. Today, scientists all over the world are involved in the painstaking process. They point their telescopes at a single region of the sky and take periodic snapshots. Then they line up the images, looking for anything that moves from frame to frame. We are looking first for the larger asteroids and comets, the ones a mile or so in diameter, and eventually we'll extend it to the smaller ones. Scientists estimate our solar system has more than a thousand comets and asteroids that are around a kilometer in diameter. So far, searchers have identified over 700 of them. And those are just the giants that can do apocalyptic damage. We may never be able to locate every threat. There could be millions of comets and asteroids that measure 100 meters or so, the length of a sports field. That's more than three times the size of the rock that slammed into Arizona 50,000 years ago. Still, telescopes are a first line of defense against what could be a major disaster for our planet. If you don't look, you won't know anything's coming. We would be taken by surprise just as much as the dinosaurs. If you do carry out a survey, then you hope that you can have warning. But it's one or the other. Either you have years or decades of warning, or you're taken completely by surprise. There's nothing in between. There's three things that are important. You have to find them early, you have to find them early, and you have to find them early. Suppose we do detect a comet headed for Earth then what can we do? Scientists have just started to come up with solutions. One of the leading ideas? Smash a rocket into it, to slow it or knock it off course. That's harder than it may seem. If comets were hard ice balls, as first thought, a powerful thump from a rocket might do the trick but some comets may be porous. They could just absorb whatever we throw at them, like a sponge. In 2005, scientists were ready to test their theories about how a comet would react when it was hit. They were going to try to crash a rocket into one. They called it Deep Impact. They were going to see what happened when a spacecraft slammed violently into a comet at 37,000 kilometers an hour. Deep Impact's primary goal was to peer inside a comet. That inner material has remained relatively unchanged since the solar system was formed and could provide clues about the solar system's beginnings. But astronomers also hoped to gather ideas about how to stop a comet heading towards us. Deep Impact began here at NASA's vertical gun range in Mountain View, California, where it was the job of Dr. Peter Schultz and his team to figure out what the comet would do when it was hit. This particular instrument allows us to fire a, a small sphere, about a quarter inch, at speeds that are maybe six or seven times the speed of a rifle bullet. This whole assembly rotates up to an elevation where the gun is basically three stories high. This allows us to send the projectile through different openings in the chamber so that we can impact a flat surface at different angles. 